talking to boss or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I, w I would like to introduce you to a white ginger man right there. <laughs> okay. Does that make sense? So anyone's welcome. I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, if you like, we can exchange numbers. And not everyone is like, with, there's, especially now with the rise of Islamophobia and so on and so forth. So we might be a bit hesitant, yeah. but we have open days. And honestly speaking, it is open to everyone. Yeah. But if, the, if you're unexpected, then you may not get the warm reception that you deserve. However, that's just their individual nature, whatever. Islamically, anyone can come in. You don't need an appointment, so on and so forth. We've got um, five daily prayers, so we're open like at least five times a day. Where are you, where are you guys based from? <coughs> um, there's a mosque near Plaso Station. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we're, we're independent. So, um, what, where's your locality? In Basildon. Basildon? Yeah, but I'm, I'm from, I'm from Town. I just moved to Basildon like, with my family. And yeah, 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 yeah. Just, to, just to get them out of London. Just, you know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, different, different vibes yeah. and different I live pace. I've my life and always respected you guys. I, mm. I know Muslims are a beautiful religion. And, mm. you know, mm. I, I know sometimes bad people do stuff in, in, in the name of Jesus Christ. People go out and mm. commit atrocities. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's never a reflection on, on mm. But I think, whole, you know, yeah, 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 and we need to kind of see what the fundamental teachings is. Yeah, and I think you're far more religious than I am. Mm. I go to church on a Sunday, but you know, Monday to Saturday, I, I sin, I, I do mm. stuff I shouldn't mm. be doing. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I'm, I'm aware of this, but like mm. you got you guys, you know, mm. pray three times a day, is it? five times a day, five times a day. Yeah, yeah. and we're, the target is to go to the mosque for congregational prayers. So then at least you've got that connection. No one can ever lock you guys, you know, mm. for your religion. Mm. And, you know, and I think, there. look, actions preceded by knowledge. So knowledge is first. Yeah. And what is the key knowledge? The knowledge is knowing God. Who is God? Does that make sense? God is uniquely one. Um, God is self-sustaining eternal. God doesn't have offspring, nor was he born. And there's nothing comparable to God. That's a four-line definition from the Quran, chapter 112. Okay. And to me, whoever meets that four-line definition deserves to be worshipped. Now, Jesus Christ doesn't meet that definition. The Holy Spirit doesn't meet that definition. At no point um, would you find again, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, the co-equal, they're the same. Like I've had this conversation with many people and they'll say oh, to me, oh, um, you know, I and the Father are one. My position on that is, that is a contradiction in the Bible now. Because where's the third? Does that make sense? Yeah. So you're saying Jesus Christ, I and the Father are one, but then where, where's the third? Then why hasn't the third and the... the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Yeah. Why is that not emphasized throughout the Bible? When Jesus Christ was asked about where's the greatest commandment? Um, where's the first of all commandments? He said the same thing Moses said. Out of the Ten Commandments, Moses said, um, the Lord is one. Go make an embraiding images of God. Does that make sense? Worship God alone. Jesus Christ said, hey, oh, the grace of all commandments is, hey, the first of all commandments is, hey, O oh, Israel, the Lord our God is one. And I'm like, that goes against Trinity. So you can't claim to be a monotheistic religion and then not actually, you're not worshipping God. Because you... Thank you very much. What's your name, by the way? Bradley. Bradley. Yeah. Um, Ridwan, I respect that you're praising Muslims for our actions, yeah. but I'm saying more important than our actions is the belief. And the reason I was about to show you the five pillars, but the first pillar is the belief. So what, what, do you, what are we supposed to believe? Now, what would you, how would you encapsulate what you believe in a few sentences? What, in, in God? Yeah. I... You know, I was, I was brought up a Christian by my mum, went to Sunday school, you know. It's, uh, my mum was really religious, you know, to, took us to church on Christmas Day and stuff like that. But, mm. you know, I, I find God helps me sometimes. You know, I, I pray a lot, you know, mm. when things are going bad. And, you know, I, I no, no, but how would you define God? What, what, is the, you, what is your belief as a Christian? Oh, what is God? Yeah. He's, he's um, the maker of the universe, the maker of everything. He's, yeah. Um, I agree, and then, but I the whole thing you can explain kind of what he is. Do you know what I mean? Because I'm not sure what he is. You know, I know he's not like a being like us. I, I have no idea like what he looks like. But 
you know, I, I know he's the father and the creator of, of, of everything. But then it's like, again, now when you say father, you've added a hierarchy because you've got the father, the son, the Holy Spirit, right? So he's the father. So is he the father? Is he not the son? Is he not the Holy Spirit? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So innately, we're going to refer to God as the Father, as the all-powerful, but then we don't see Jesus Christ as all-powerful because he died on the cross. We don't see, um, like, you should be um, dividing your worship, yeah, equally amongst the free. And even still, that feels uncomfortable for me to say that because why would you divide your worship? You worship one. Where, how does the Trinity come into it? Does it make sense? So, again, I would say that, look, go to your church, read the Bible, read in um, with the Quran, and then see that, look, where is the Trinity? Where's the whole concept of Trinity? Are they, are they reading into verses? Um, I can't just read the Bible and accept it as a whole. I, I, I question everything. You know? yeah, yeah. I, I don't. I question everything. Mm. Some of the a Christian Bible doesn't make so much sense. But which Bible do you read? Which translation? Which version? It's the, um, it's the New Testament. Mm. Okay, yeah. Because that's the one that has uh, revelations and that in it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And again, that's another thing I have, like... The Old Testament, the New Testament. You said one of the differences between Muslim and you teach your child is... Um, we've got additional prophet, the Prophet Muhammad, right? How would you feel if I was to say that, look, um, the Prophet Muhammad is mentioned by name in the Old Testament. When Jesus Christ said that, I must leave you now. If I don't leave you now, uh, I will leave you now and then send the Comforter. The Comforter won't come, right? So I must leave you now and the Comforter will come. That's referring to, who, who do you think that's referring to? Do you know the verse I'm talking about, by the way? I, I believe so. Does it actually say Muhammad? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I can't tell you off the top of my head. I'll speak to you and I'll hopefully feel okay with this. Can we exchange numbers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'll give you, I'll give you the details. Um, I'll give you the reference. And yeah, but then the thing is, you have to look into the Hebrews reverse revealed it. I don't. I'm going to give you my number so I know it for her. Okay. So what I'll do, just because it's being recorded, I'm going to type into my phone actually. That's why I got my phone out. I was wondering, why well, I got my phone out. I know my number is there. One six three. That's Brilliant. Number. Thank you very Bradley. much. Bradley, yeah? And my name is Ridwan. Ridwan? Yeah. Okay, I've been into that in my phone. <clears throat> and yeah, he's mentioned by name. And when you, and I'll give you more details in regards to the description given of the comforter. And everyone's like, oh, that's the Holy Spirit. But then the Holy Spirit was always there. So why does Jesus Christ need to leave before the Comforter is sent? And then when you see the definition and the comparison is made between the Comforter and Moses, and Moses and um, the Prophet Muhammad are similar. You can't compare the Holy Spirit and Moses. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah never. <laughs> exactly, never. exactly. Even I know that, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. There you go. So then it's like, when you look at it critically, critical you see that, look, wait, why am I actually going with something the Bible isn't categorically teaching um, and Jesus Christ isn't teaching it and it only came 300 years later. Does that make sense? When you read uh, Mark and the four Gospels, right? Mark is the first, right? And the last is John. If you read them both and you read Mark first and then read John, because you'll notice there's, there's a... My metamorphosis taking place with Jesus. Does that make sense? With Mark, he's a very like kind of Islamic narrative. He's like a man. Yeah. And then with John, it's like it's, it's very confusing. One minute he's a man, next minute it's like um, ambiguous language is being used. Because even in the Bible, right? Knowing the entire Bible, does Jesus Christ ever claim, I am God or worship me? Yeah. You know, God is good, right? You've heard that. 
in the Bible, let me give you some references. I've been talking all this with no references, right? Even going to church, you know, like when I step in there on a Sunday, me and my son, like, it just, you know, it makes you feel good. I don't know if it's people singing, you know, the, the hymns, but just, just, you know, that, that positive energy, it just makes you feel good, man. <coughs> and I've prayed, I've, you know, I've been in, I've prayed before and God sort of answered my prayer, so, yeah, I don't know. I think, look, it's good. You see, the scientists have just come out now as well and said that the Big Bang didn't, didn't exist. You know that? Oh, is it? No, no, no. Yeah, what, what the scientists they all, all this time, since, since they put the James Webb telescope up there, mm. they've actually found galaxies now that, you know, because of all the religious people have been saying, like, the, the world didn't start with a Big Bang, do you know what I mean? It's mm. a Big Bang. It's, it's mm. stupid. But they've mm. just found out it, it doesn't exist anymore. Mm. But they're having to rewrite all the science books now, do you know what mm. I mean? So when that happened, this is just recently made me even believe in God even more because I was like because I've been the Islamic narrative yeah. when it comes to the Big Bang like I wouldn't negate it I would say that look at the end of the day in the Quran it says that Allah says kun fai kun for something to be and it is so if Allah wanted to cause the Big Bang and create the universe as Muslims we don't have an issue with that because okay. with science is that you can say Big Bang but then what caused the Big Bang yeah. and from nothing comes nothing so I love speaking to atheists. I, I love speaking to them, like um, people who don't believe in God. And it's like, really, it's very, very superficial, very like they don't know what they believe. And it's like, oh, we believe in science. Science is a tool. Does that make sense? Yeah. Me using a tape measure doesn't aff aff affirm my belief in you existing or make me disbelieve. It just helps me to see how tall you are. Does that make sense? It's a, it's, a, it's a tool. It's a measurement. It's a measurement. It so same, exist, same with it science. It's like, it's like time. Time doesn't exist. Clocks exist. Time doesn't exist. Exactly. So yeah. science is limited yeah. by time, space, things it can tangibly measure. You know what I mean? Um, the scientific method they call it. But in the Bible, um, Jesus Christ was approached by somebody and said, "Look, um, oh good master," and Jesus Christ replies, um, "Why dost thou call me good?" None is good but one, that is God. So that's in Mark 10, 18. And my favorite verse, um, does Jesus, let me ask you a question, does Jesus Christ have a God? Yes. Jesus, Jesus Christ have a God? Yeah. Yes. Who's Jesus Christ is God? God. So God has a God? No, because Jesus was a God. Jesus, Pardon? Jesus is, was a God, he was just a, he was just, he was just like a prophet. He's the son of God, but he's, he wasn't a God. I don't look at How do you reconcile that with the Trinity? Um, I'm not sure. I just, it's just because you've got, you got the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit and you must believe in, in them all. Mm -hmm. As well as the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. They're not three gods, but they're one God. Yeah. So you're believing that Jesus is God, the Holy Spirit is God. And in the Bible, in John 17, 3, he categorically, categorically says, for eternal life, that they may know the only true God. So Jesus Christ is saying that they may know for eternal life, for paradise, that you may know the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. Do you have a Bible on your phone, by the way? No, I don't know. Yeah? Oh, actually, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Because okay. yeah? yes, you, can, you, can, you can check these verses yeah, and actually yes, verify yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? You can put it in your nose and actually double check what I'm saying and it's there. I have it on a Kindle. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I believe even, you know, I wasn't supposed to come this way today, but the train was, the, um, the, the train's not running from West Ham to um, Canyon Town. So okay. And the fact that I've come here today and met you, I, I believe in everything happens for a reason. So, you know, I, 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 when you guys are doing Ramadan, on YouTube one, I watch you guys all walking around. Is it in Mecca? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. For, for a long well, why, why do you do that? I don't know. Do you, always... Is it watching you enjoy or the listening? Because no, they I have Quran playing as well. Yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah, I listen. Um, That's amazing. Sometimes for like 30 minutes, I'm sitting there watching it. Wow, wow, wow. I don't wow. know. Like, I've always been drawn to something that's always told me that maybe Muslim is like. Yeah. Yeah. The real religion, but I don't know why, but I've always just felt that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the thing is, right, subhanAllah, this is very beautiful because you know the Prophet Muhammad, he spoke Arabic. We have the Quran in Arabic. And when you're watching the people going around the Kaaba, right, who built that? Do you know, by the way? Um, 
Abraham. Abraham built that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So when we do Hajj, which is the fifth pillar um, in Islam, we're doing acting upon um, the Sunnah, the way shown by the Abraham, what he done. Does that make sense? So there's actions and all these kind of elements, and then he built it, and then the Prophet is. We're actually doing the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, because he's shown it. But there's elements intertwined with Abraham's kind of life and his marriage and his wife and so on and so forth, all these elements of it. So we're Abrahamic religion, does that make sense? In the sense that we believe in Abraham, he came with monotheism, you know what I mean? The Prophet Muhammad is a descendant of Abraham as well. So the point I'm trying to make is when you're watching that, A, and you're listening to Quran recitation, that's actually divinely inspired um, speech from God Almighty. Because the Quran categorically says that the Quran is from God and Allah will protect it. And Allah, um, the one that's worthy of worship, is Allah. That's, that's how, what Allah means, the one, God, right? And when we prefer to use the word Allah is because, look, you can't change, put gender on Allah. You know when you say God, you can say Goddess. So you've got male and female God. Yeah? Allah is free from his creation, com comparison to his creation. You know with God, you can say, put an S and make a proof, God's. Yeah? In Islam, you can't add an S to Allah. You can't make a proof. Allah is singular. So then that's why like most Muslims will say Allah, Allah, Allah. And then it's the divine language, the divine Quran that's been revealed in Arabic and you're listening to it and it's touching your heart. Do you know what I mean? So we've preserved the Arabic language by the way we've preserved the Quran. So do you know much about Islam? Um, I, know, I, know, I, know, I know some stuff, but not, not, not in great detail. Probably. Yeah. Um, I'm from Canada and I have a lot of, I have a lot of um, Asian friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, to be quite honest, I, I don't really have many white friends or white friends. Yeah. I have a mixed race or you know, Indian, Pakistan. Yeah. <laughs> Because what ends up happening is sometimes we have these conversations and you're in a friendship but then we may not necessarily articulate Islam to you or we may not have, they may not have the knowledge. Does that make sense? So I think what's unique about Islam is the monotheism, the belief in one God. Um, we have this concept that, look, God is unique in his names and attributes. So you're saying, yeah, I can't really describe God, but you, I can describe God. God is uniquely one. God is all powerful. God is all knowing. Yeah. God is all loving, God is all just, all merciful. Does that make sense? So we know God by his names and attributes. Yeah. Um, My God is the same as your God, isn't it? It's the same. It's the same guy, isn't it? I would say that, look, as I believe in Jesus Christ, and I believe in the book that was revealed to him. Yeah. Now, is that book still around? I would say, unfortunately, no. At the moment, you have the Bible which man-made elements has gone into it. So the message that Jesus Christ came with has been lost and corrupted. Yeah, I hope I haven't offended you. Yeah. And when it comes to the Quran, if you Google Quran Birmingham manuscript, you see that we have a Quran that's been carbon dated to the time of the Prophet Muhammad. Lived in Birmingham for a little while. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, as soon as I come out the station, it's the first time I've seen guys like, yeah. doing, like doing what inviting doing. people to Islam. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But this is like a little gem where we've got, can you imagine, they accidentally found it and it's been carbon dated to the lifetime of the Prophet Muhammad. Because um, you have to remember, Jesus Christ spoke Aramaic, the disciples spoke Hebrew, and now you have the Old Testament. In preserved in the oldest manuscripts we have is in Greek or Latin, I'm mistaken the two. Um, Latin, I think. Yeah, yeah. So you've got at best a translation or translation or translation. So when you're hearing the Quran being recited, it's, it's the exact revelation that came from God. And we've preserved over um, 6,000 verses in the languages revealed through a oral tradition. So, you know, the Quran being uh, manuscripts in Birmingham, yeah. to me, that's secondary. My primary source is millions upon millions of people memorizing the Quran. Majority, most of them 
are non-Arabs who have memorized the entire Quran word for word, letter for letter, dot for dot. How amazing is that? Does that make sense? You're from the Christian background. How many Christians do you know who've memorized the entire Bible? Some of them know the Bible. I mean, they have like Bible studies and stuff. But I'm just saying, in totality, who's memorized it? With us, it's like, I can, we could go Saudi one day and I can introduce you to a man, 19 generations, who memorized the Quran directly from the mouth of the Prophet Muhammad. So the Prophet Muhammad spoke it, um, the companion memorized it, he taught someone else, taught someone else. 19 generations later, this gentleman learned it all from there and he's got permission to learn it. Does that make sense? So it, it's these elements that make me confident in my belief in Islam. Does that make sense? There's, there's, no, there's no blind um, faith. And I think blind faith came, comes after once your faith is strong foundationally. Does that make sense? So once I got to a stage where like Islam is right, this is correct, there's no mistakes here, all of this makes sense. Now I don't rely on science anymore. Does it make sense? It's got to a point where if science says something and the Quran says something, I'm gonna believe the Quran. Does it make sense? Because there's many things the Quran talks about when it talks about embryology and stuff like that and it gets it right. Does it make sense? Where it was taken to a leading embryology question when they're like, um, Professor Keith Moore is like, look, it's not possible for anyone to know this when you didn't have microscopes. Does that make sense? So then for me, it's like, wait, this can only be from God. And then you have the life of the Prophet Muhammad, yeah? A desert dwelling man who was Ill, um, unlettered, yeah? What did he achieve in his life? Do you know what I mean? Like, he taught you how to um, do business transactions, how to treat your wife, how to treat your mother, um, how to cut your nails, how to conquer lands, how to wash yourself when you come out of the bathroom. It's a complete way of life. And that is the divine guidance we need from God. Because why would God create me and you and leave us to our own devices? You're telling me God can't protect a book. Do you have Adam and Eve in this book? Yes. Oh, you do, yeah? Yeah. But our concept of Adam and Eve is slightly, slightly different to uh, the Christian narrative because we believe that look, um, God advised Adam not to go near this tree. Yeah? And yes, the devil came, um, we wouldn't say a snake, but he came and kind of um, coerced him and uh, made him forget and it's like, Oh, for, you can go and live forever and eat from it. No, 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 no. So, you know the whole concept of um, women being on the menses and giving childbirth in pain? That's because the, in the Christian narrative, they believe it's because they, she, coerced, um, she coerced Adam into eating the fruit. So, Adam, he ate the fruit and suddenly, like, he noticed himself naked. Does that make sense? So he knew that, like, damn it, I've done something wrong, right? And then what did he do? He asked God for forgiveness. And he fell to his knees, then he asked God for forgiveness, and he asked for forgiveness for Eve. Yeah, we say how about Eve. And it's like, that's it. Does that make sense? Where um, we don't have this concept of people being born into original sin just because Adam made that mistake. So, what, what do you ask about Adam, by the way? I just wanted to know, you know, because I'm going to read this book. Yeah. I could talk to you all day, but I've got someone waiting for me. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. But you've got my number. Yeah, 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 yeah. I really appreciate the book. I've never had one before, so I'm going to. No. I'm going to let you go. I feel like I've spoken, but I'm going to let you have the final thoughts. Any questions, anything going through your head before you go? Just, uh, um, you know, uh, I was always brought up to respect people's beliefs and their religions. Mm. Um, I've always told them me and you, whether we're like brothers, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I believe in God. You don't make this slightly a little bit different. Like in him, in we're, we're, we're brothers, as in we're both from Adam and Eve. But I want to be brothers with you in faith as well. Does that make sense? So I'm going to let you go. And... Yeah, I'm going to send you some details and one, yeah, we'll yeah. go to, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice to, nice to you, my man. pleasure, yeah, absolute yeah, pleasure. Yeah. You got my number, I, yeah. I promise you, I'll, I'll, I'll have a read through. If you've got any questions, yeah. give me a call, give me, ask me questions and then we'll do a round two in front of the cameras okay. after you've read it, yeah? yeah. Thank you so much, yeah. you take care, yeah? Nice Stay safe, thanks so much.